What are you talking about, Liz? I don't know. What are you know, doing here? Man. Oh, you know what I want to talk about during the hangover? Um, What's that? I wanted to uh, maybe tell our own personal spooky tales that we've had, uh, planetarium wise or or otherwise. I know Brandon has one that I can think of, such as uh, "What's Behind You." Um, that's oh, I forgot about that one. That was not the one I was thinking about. God. <laughs> That wasn't the one you were thinking about? No. It's even better. That was a good story, though. That's oh, that was story. good. That's a good story. Um, So, uh, just for a little bit of... Uh, oh, 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 I should say. Welcome to The Hangover, everyone, with Cosmos Welcome. from Cosmos. Um, oh, Jack has a good tip. His realtor said, look at houses outside of your price range so you can get ideas for upgrades you want to do to your home. Oh, yeah, Jack, I have all the ideas on the upgrades that I would want or, or need in the um i need a spiral yeah. staircase inside of an in, uh of a personal library there and are, then and then i need a ladder ones. that will you know yeah, you can wheel it so i could be like bell from beauty and the yeah. beast and of course i had to wheel myself across the library that's all i want in my life that's all i want in my life uh-huh. uh yeah okay so uh jack brings in, my mom says haunted planetarium and jack brings up the titanic exhibit so the titanic exhibit liz okay. take it away well no 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 i think we might need to wait for mike to come back um okay yeah mike uh, can tell for the, that the one titanic because he story. can tell it better because oh. we did uh, arizona science center when we were there well before i was there uh they had we uh, apparently arizona science center had the titanic exhibit twice and the first time mm-hmm. they had like a really good one where they had like three levels and each and that's level the one i went to when i was like classes. nine years old Okay, um, and so there are stories related with that one. Um, when I was in Arizona, actually, funny, funny side story. Um, I moved to Arizona in in two thousand and six, and um, shortly after I moved there, they ended up having a, a Titanic exhibit, and I'm a big Titanic buff. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, I gotta go check out this exhibit, and that's when I first discovered that there was a planetarium there. And um, oh, it made weird. me go back to see a planetarium show. And then I eventually applied to work at that planetarium. Who, who, who and gave your show? Mike gave the show to me, my sister, and my ex-husband at the time. So, yeah, I remember you being in And he show. remembers me being in that show. So, uh, But we'll let Mike handle the actual, the, the good stories from the first initial Titanic exhibit. But uh, are you good? Are you back? Are you... We set? We good? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll uh, text Brandon here shortly. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so we're talking. Um, we're, well, so I was gonna talk. I said we'll talk about our spooky planetarium stories. So, but but uh, Mike had said no fair. You had the Titanic exhibit. So why don't you go in and talk about the stories that came with that Titanic exhibit? Mike like Eric has Rickman said story. no fair. You uh, Jack said that. There uh, you go. Uh, oh, sorry, Jack. We, we uh, had it twice. Uh, yeah, I said that, uh, but um, with uh, Joe and Eric stories <clears throat> of the Titanic. Yeah, so I, I, I do want to say that the Titanic, the first time, yes. really and truly, was one of the best exhibits that we mm-hmm. have ever had. Um, it was just an incredible <sighs> use of space. I wish I could have seen it. Um, it was awesome. <sighs> it really was. It was... Um, they utilized all three floors of the Science Center, and uh, there was um, definite, like, as you went down towards the first floor, you came in on the third floor, which is where first class, first class was, mm-hmm. the Grand Staircase, all of that. Mm-hmm. And as you descend down into the Science Center, down towards the first floor, you're going deeper into the boat. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The sounds of the engines got louder. That mm-hmm. they actually made it warmer. It the was changed. Yeah. So well done. And um, when like we would produce shows in the planetarium, it was always pay attention to the small details. You live and die by the small details. Mm-hmm. And that was so incredible. The attention to details that they did. Um, it, it was phenomenal. We won't talk about the second time, but uh, the first time was just absolutely phenomenal. Was when I went, I went to the second time. I so, what, let's see, what, when did that first one come by? What year did they? Oh, geez. Um, I, oh, God, was it before? I, uh, I can't remember. I cannot remember, but it was early on in the new yeah. Science Center. So, right. I, new, I think, 
I, I think I so I remember going there. I think I may, may have been around eleven to twelve. All right, so early two thousands. Yeah, um, I, I thought it might have been early two thousands when um, when I did it, but um, so we had um, uh, we had the Planetarium, we had the IMAX, um, uh, the two theaters, we had at Arizona Science Center, and um, the guy that ran um, ran the IMAX. I don't know what that what that says. Oh, so I guess we're paused. It says be right back. Oh uh, wait, I think I'm being dumb. Uh, live. Hey, now okay. I fix things on my user error. Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> oh shit! Did I just fuck? It? I fucked up Brandon's screen. There it's for the go. best. Honestly, right. it's for the best. <laughs> there we go. All right, continue. All right. So, yeah, am I good? Yeah. yeah okay. Good. okay. So uh, we had a guy run the IMAX. His name was Eric. Um, mm-hmm. And um, Eric one night was putting together a film. This was after the first run of Titanic. Mm-hmm. And so we would get these IMAX films. They would come in in <laughs> these big boxes on platters. And he would have to uh, literally splice them a- together. With actual film. With actual film. Okay. Um. And uh, basically, there's tape and all this kind of stuff. There's a way you do it. And so, we um, we don't want to do it during the day because we're running shows, mm-hmm. and you kind of need light in the booth, uh, mm-hmm. theater booth, to actually do this. Um, and so he's he is staying late to do this. This is two o'clock in the morning, two three o'clock in the morning. He's doing this, and he hears little girls laughing and running down the hall and um and so he literally opens the door and looks out of course there's no girls there's no mm-hmm. little girls that are oh, right, five to ten years old yeah, like he's there. thinking like maybe there was a camp or something someone stayed over or something no nope, like there were no camps going on and so he is recounting this story um, to our basically is the head of uh, the building facilities uh, facilities um, his name is Joe. Joe Joe I love Joe and um, and literally Joe just goes so you heard him too and that was it <laughs> I would be freaked I'd so, be like so, oh I love Joe so you heard him too um but we're gonna fast forward now a few years. Titanic comes back. Mm-hmm. Arizona Science Center it. wants the, um, the the attendance, mm-hmm. and so uh, Titanic comes back for its second run. And um, the uh, when Titanic left the second time, apparently the girls went with it. Um, they we at Air, the Science Center they didn't hear the girls anymore. Running down the halls, laughing. And giggling at two o'clock in the morning. I mean, that's love it, love it. I mean, your mind is automatically playing tricks with you when you're in that because we both we've all been in oh yeah the science center after hours where any kind of museum after hours gets real creepy. Right, you get but, that but creepy I will, feeling. I, but I will say, since then I've been in many museums after hours, and nobody has seen that except for me. It's never been that. Creepy. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> then, Brandon, why don't you tell us your creepy story? You uh, yeah, that's creepy. So, 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 so the one you had mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, so, working in the planetarium, nice big one. We've all heard noises, things that sound like footsteps, mm-hmm. and you get kind of the feeling when you walk in there and go run turn the system on, like your hair kind of turns up on you. I'm uh-huh. just kidding. Uh-huh. It doesn't feel quite yeah, right. I would always run in to turn the lights on, like I'm not dilly dallying. Yeah, and again, I've been to many others, but that's the only one that felt like that. Mm. <laughs> so, anyway, so you always have that feeling in the back of your head, and you always hear footsteps once in a while during a show. That's weird. Uh, so, one of the mornings I came in, I had that feeling, and this is kind of weird. I heard the footsteps again during, you know, during setup. Okay, whatever. It happens once in a while. Uh, so, I had that in the back of my mind. And we're doing a show called Treehouse Adventures. And it's all about, you know, what the clouds look like. And what are some fun mm-hmm. stories about the stars? Like, can you see the ice cream ice cream cone and the stars? And it's great fun. Mm-hmm. And so I'm giving this show to just a single family. It's uh, mom and dad and a little girl. 
And so after we play a little show about, um, you know, how did Hawaii get its shape, for example, um, the little girl raises her hand. And it's dark at this point because I just have the stars up. And I go, yeah, what's your question? And she goes, what's standing behind you? <laughs> um, I, at this point, I do not look behind me. <laughs> I just go, oh, it's just shadows. Who's ready for the next movie? Click. And I just run away. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's 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 a pretty creepy one. That's a good one. I mean, I've heard footsteps on the catwalk, on the yeah. catwalk behind the the dome. Uh, yeah. You can hear that I... clang. And then one uh, that was was told to us by a coworker, Lena, oh, is yes. uh, she had uh, gone up to the console, which is where the computer is, and you know where the manual controls are which is behind in our oh, the dome. magic happens yeah it's behind the seating uh which is broken up into like an upper section then there's a platform and there was a lower section and then your your kind of base uh stage area and we generally presenting shows we would always be on that middle platform primarily um but then uh there wasn't a show going on she was up she had walked up towards the console or she was standing outside of the console and she heard um just like like a british <laughs> like a british little kid say hello <laughs> like right next to her like in her ear and lena and us all we're very skeptical we're very scientific we don't believe in ghosts uh, but she ran the fuck <laughs> out of the planetarium into our planetarium office and then told us the story of yeah, what she just she, like, heard. Ask us? Yeah, she was like, is anybody in the dome? Was anybody? Yeah. And we're like, no, we're here in the office. And she was like, I just, as clear as day, <laughs> heard a voice right next to me say, hello. And it freaked her the fuck out. Yeah. Um, yeah, when we first opened um, in, in the new Arizona Science Center, there were there were two. There was mm -hmm. what we called the store, uh, storefront, and in '97 they opened the big concrete monstrosity. But um, uh, the concrete representation of Arizona. The uh, but yeah, I mean, you would be given a show, and you would hear what sounded like people walking on the catwalk, uh, which is. Uh, behind the dome, it's yeah. how you metal access platform. all. It's metal. It's how you I, access all the pro, uh, projectors that we had. And there were times where in a you just get to a part of the show where you can start the show. Um, and I mean, I walked the catwalk to make sure that there really uh -huh. wasn't nobody back uh -huh. there. I um, yeah, I ch I chased it once. I remember chasing the footsteps and nothing. Because if it was just temperature fluctuations that happen in single spot typically, but it would happen around the dome, and it's just the weirdest thing. Yeah. And there was um, a creepy hallway. The creepy hallway. The creepy um, hallway. Hallway. Behind the dome. So the Could way. Nowhere. Was, Could yeah, nowhere. the way that. It, so it was like there was concrete everywhere, concrete walls, what have you, and going behind the dome, there was one section you get to, and there was this little hallway that that. Uh, was just encased and and went to nowhere and it pitch black there was no lighting um and so it was just a really terrifying because your mind could go so many different directions with it right. because it was like why yes, why, why was this question. built here yeah. because did it, that make you go back there though that was like an initiation yeah, thing of being hired in the dome it's like by. eventually it was like you took us everybody back to the creepy hallway. Yep, I, th I think Liz did that to me. Yes, it's yep. like a thing. Like, all right, time to go check out the creepy hallway. And it's just, it, it's a hallway to nowhere. To nowhere. It, it, and if they if they had just continued it going, probably like five more feet, they would have end up on the other side of the dome, and you could have actually yeah come out. But, but it the, just goes nowhere. It's nowhere. And then there's this like, there's this pipe. That just kind of just two pipes just juts two pipes. out. Yeah, yeah, you have to like duck under them. Yeah, and, you got to duck under them. Uh, yeah, like no one would find you back there. Oh God, no, no. It no. It, it is Edgar no. Allan Poe. Mm -hmm. You could do the telltale heart esque. Yeah, yeah. You could just wall somebody up there, and mm -hmm. um, you know nobody would ever know. Yeah.
uh, uh, Jack said, uh, so Jack tells a story. He says, King Planetarium had a spooky moment in that they could hear someone walking around under the planetarium following the aisles, but there yep. isn't a basement under the planetarium. Yep, 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 yep. Where yep. were those footsteps coming from? I mean, it's... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, almost every planetarium has a ghost. Almost everyone has some kind of story like that. So you, you think it starts as temperature fluctuations and things heating up, the things wind changes. And... But we all understand that. And we are all, mm -hmm. again, planetarium people, scientific-minded people. Mm -hmm. So we say we don't believe in ghosts. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> but, but, but we've all had experiences but. with ghosts. <laughs> I want to believe. Yeah. So uh, Liz and I are watching this thing. What, what is it called? 28 Days. Oh, 28 Days Haunted on Netflix. 28 Days just came Haunted. Out. Oh my God, it's such a rabbit hole. It is such uh, a rabbit hole. Bullshit, you go down but... and um, we're just like, from a science point of view, just critiquing it. But <laughs> Well, I wait a minute. You bring those critiques into our planetariums and then it's just... You want some wine? Yeah, why haven't you drinking this? I, I think it's a tea. Um, <laughs> it's a straw. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, I just feel like it's all going to just oh. come out. <laughs> like dentures. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so, but we never, like with Argos, we never did those critiques. I mean, look, all. look, I have been watching. I chased, I chased it down. I did my best. I would not. Um, I would come in the dome in the morning and I would run up the stairs to the computer room and or to the console, I immediately turn lights on or turn the computers on, whatever it was first. I can't remember. Um, and I would just get some form of lighting in there, um, even though I was like, "There's nothing here." But yeah, it's like Luigi's Mansion. It just freaks you out. You just want to run. You just gotta go. Yeah. Um, but uh, fuck, what was I gonna say? Um, oh yeah, I've been watching. Uh, horror movies since I was like six years old. Thank you, mom. Um, and I'm not saying this in a bad way because I really appreciate the leeway no, you really gave me done right, with no uh, watching what I wanted to. Um, we'd go to Video One. This is pre Blockbuster. Video oh, I had Video one. Update. Nice. Oh, yeah. We had Video One. I can remember the exact location it was in Alamo. It's now a Starbucks. Um, and they had those giant lollipops of different flavors. Uh, but anyway. Um, so I would go to like the normal section and get like the Care Bears and the My Little Ponies. Uh, but then I would go to the horror section and, and, and look at the horror section. And so I've been introduced to many a range of horror movies from Candyman, um, to the Halloweens and the, and the Krugers and, um, you know, Last House on the Left, which is actually disappointing to me personally. Uh, but what all these, this one? uh, Last House on the Left. Oh. Uh, and all these horror movies, however, the downside of it is even though I am a rational, logical person of, uh, you know, scientific mind, um, I am scared of the dark because as soon as, like, I'm in a dark room with nobody else around me, my mind immediately starts just playing tricks and <laughs> and things like i remember when i was little and i'd be in my room and i'd always have my door open and there was this long i say long it wasn't that long but a, a hallway out of my room um that let there was a bathroom and another bedroom and then it wrapped around into like a living room dining room area um but i would like imagine like ghosts that were like bent and like i could see them like coming down the hallway even though there wasn't anything there um, so my mind has a vivid imagination that plays massive tricks on me. And so I get scared of the dark and I need to actually sleep with some form of nightlight or if I'm by myself. Do our drinking rules count in the hay? Take a drink. <laughs> um, I don't know what they're barking at. My wrapping paper for Christmas came yesterday. It's the twins. <laughs> um... As long as I didn't end up with, in bed with with mom at the middle in the middle of the night, I was a nightmare child trying to get go to bed at night. But anyway, so I still have those kind of like, even though I know there's like like if you try to say Candyman three times, I'm gonna be like, please stop at the second one. Candyman. Stop at the second one. <laughs> uh, Katie knows that hallway does things at night. That hallway, it was an old house. It got creaky floors. Hey, you know what? So what what? Oh, go ahead. Uh, you don't have to worry about it now. I 
I don't have to worry about now. So one of the things I always wanted to do, so I'm going to work with Linda, who's fantastic and oh awesome. Oh, my God, Linda. Uh, she told me a story that her brothers played on her when she was younger, and they always wanted to do in planetariums. So when the house was dark, uh, she would get in thinking she's the only one in there, mm-hmm. and the brothers have put their hand over the light switch, so she would go to put the light switch on and feel their hands. Oh, God. And I so, <laughs> so wanted to do that to Liz. Oh, I would die. <laughs> I would die. <laughs> uh, Jor- my mom said Jordy, their uh, Australian, one of their Australian shepherds, just got up looking for another dog. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't worry, Jordy. We'll be there uh, in about in a, a month. month. Or two weeks. I don't think oh, I told my parents we're staying weeks? for two weeks. Oh, well, you just did. Hey, mom, First you told me. We're staying for two weeks and Thanksgiving and Christmas. <laughs> hey, but I, hey, Christmas I ha- might be longer. I don't need a house sit this time around. You don't need a house sit. No. We, we, now that we can us. take winter with us. Yes. Uh, winter and I had a great time last year for Thanksgiving. I mean, that's though. good. That's good. I'm glad you kept winter company. <laughs> anyway, um, so. Yeah, I mean, point there. Like, there's so much crazy. Oh, stuff I did. Work. I did ask. I asked Mike yesterday. We were watching. <sighs> we were watching the horror. The the little like paranormal activity people. You know, be locked up in their haunted houses and do their shit um <laughs> and uh uh i asked mike i was like well what particles of matter would ghosts be made of because they have to be made of some form of matter and his response was simply ghost ons uh which then brandon once i texted him that his response was uh, ectotrons <laughs> and i was like that's also a good response mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's like ghosts go if for there to be ghosts there has to be matter that they would have to be made out of. And and if they were if they were ghosts, for example, space ghosts, how would they propel themselves? Because I mean, those, I know they got to go they coast to coast. Do some kind of weird, nice. They had to do some kind of weird interdimensional energy because you can't just propel yourself randomly in space without having well, energy behind you. That's why people bring in the extra energy stuff. They had like a little uh, static electricity generator thing. Yeah, and... but there's energy everywhere. Right. I mean, energy from the sun. Then you would think they would be more active during the daytime because that's when there would be the most radiation. Well, maybe, maybe during the daytime, they're recharging the ghost batteries. <laughs> yeah, so they come okay, out at night. Yeah. I mean, they always uh-huh. only come out deal night. with these like ghosts mostly. at nighttime. At night. Most, mostly. 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 <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I like. I really just want to ask these guys these questions and, mm-hmm. you know, it's... um. And, and I wouldn't be trying to be an ass to them. It just really doesn't make sense. But Only then like they're going to get all like bent out of shape and like, mm-hmm. oh, you're just, you're, you're, you're being mean. And it's like, no, I'm trying to understand where there, you're coming from. There was one uh, in one of the things we were watching where somebody had asked like, they're like, what is the last name? Or trying to get a last name. Or can you tell us, have you ever gotten a last name? And he was like, well, last names are really hard to get, blah, blah, blah. I was like, that's convenient. That, because yeah, it can I mean, be fact-checked. Really and you can't uh-huh. make up something that. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you're going to get all bent out of shape because somebody's asking you questions, that just means that, um, you know, that you're just built on a house of lies anyway. Yeah. Uh, Jack says phantoms are made of a. Uh, made of Fan- phantoms. <laughs> phantoms. Don't you want to have phantoms? <laughs> phantoms. Uh, oh, my mom says dimensions are thinner at night. Okay. I don't know, but why? <laughs> it's dark. Uh, why? <laughs> and mirrors. Yeah, what how do they work? Mirrors how, or portals. How, but how can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real? <laughs> Right, if you were invisible, like the Invisible Man, you would have to be blind. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Otherwise, there would be two black dots that just uh, move. That's creepy. And so, because that's where that's where your eyes are absorbing the light, mm-hmm. and so you would see. Uh, I would see two black dots that just I... move, move around. So the Invisible Man is blind. <laughs> Jack says, "Note to self: weigh myself at night." <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the answer. That's good. <laughs> you know, next time I go to the doctor, which is probably going to be this week, it's just going to be like, hey, you need to, I need to be measured at night. I, can, 
I reject what this scale is saying because you're not measuring at night. Your teeth stand out so much more than my teeth do. What's that? Because your well, yours, yours look natural. You're just a natural vampire. <laughs> I'm just a, I'm a natural vampire. Mine are, yeah. I mean, you have small teeth anyway, so I think that the extra thing. I have small teeth. Yeah, you have small teeth. See, if I wore those, what? no one could tell the difference. This is the first I've heard of this. What do you mean I have small you teeth? You have smaller teeth. I don't know. Wow. Let's compare our teeth. Y'all can just compare your teeth to mine and be like, you both have small teeth. I mean, <laughs> Brandon has big teeth. It's 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 the riddle curse, yes. The, no, no. the riddle curse. We we have, we all have very big teeth. The curse very of the British. riddles. No, they would look way worse if they were British. That, well, that's true. Well, that's why half my family have dentists. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that comes in handy. Anyway. Yeah. All right, any more planetarium spooky stories or any more spooky um, stories that you've had? I don't know. I, I, I have about two hours worth of the Fermi Paradox stuff ready to go because I thought that was the entire point of the episode was each having one of those stories. Oh, oh. I so mean, I, prepa- I prepared for like 20 minutes right, worth of just... Let's talk about the Fermi Paradox. Oh, yeah, we, 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 we already talked about the Fermi Paradox. Too. A little bit, yeah. Uh, but the Fermi Paradox is also a lie in that Fermi never actually made that paradox. Is it like the cake? Out. The cake was also a lie. <laughs> no, so when, when he when he when they talked about where is everybody, um, he wasn't talking about if there's so much life we should see it. Um, he was actually talking about interstellar travel and basically mm-hmm. saying it's not feasible. If it were, we would see everybody here. That's a good point, actually. You you know who was responsible for first nuclear meltdown? <laughs> Fermi. <laughs> yeah. In nice. uh, up underneath the gymnasium at the University of Chicago, it, got away from them. <laughs> it got away you, from that, them. That tends it, that tends to happen. It got away from us. Got everybody. away from them. What do you want, Leah? Uh, Mike, or, I'm sorry, Jack, Brandon. J- Jack asks, uh, "Did you have to have your t- wisdom teeth removed?" Um, yes, and they were so big they had to put me under because they tried just the regular shots, but they were too big and I felt everything, so they put me under to take them out. I. Uh, wisdom teeth do not exist in my mouth and never have. Really? Um, I, yeah. That explains a lot. I, I, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> I'm also missing um, my 12 year molar on my bottom. So you don't have any teeth. Right? I actually had to get a tooth, the tooth, the molar above it removed because the molar would keep growing because huh. there was nothing to stop it because that molar didn't exist. But So, so thanks, whereas, parents, for not uh, giving me wisdom teeth. You know teeth. what? I am perfect. My teeth, uh, my wisdom teeth, I still got them. I, you I, still have them? That's Very how nice. I'm smart. Cool. Yeah, um, I still have my wisdom teeth. I thought everybody had to get their wisdom teeth removed. Nope. So, I never yeah, got the I, ice cream. Another, I didn't get asked from either. Another fun uh, tooth story. So remember when M and M's had the big um, deal about the gray M and M, and they found it, you get like a million dollars. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my sister and I played a joke. We we we'd stick on the mouse, and you know, eventually over time they would lose the color. But like, hey, we found it. Ha ha ha. Uh, so I was doing that, but I couldn't quite do it. Like it always came out cracked. Um, I had a tooth growing in the roof of my mouth. <laughs> In so the I roof had tooth, of your mouth? In, in the top roof of my mouth, they had a tooth growing in there, which we had to pull out, which um, once they numbed everything, got loosened, they let me pull it out. So that was cool. What is going on in your in, in your That's mouth? That's why everybody oh, in his family is dentists. I, I also had <laughs> surgery on my tongue and I'll need jaw surgery very soon. It's great. It's, it's a lot of fun. Wow. Okay, so Jack has his wisdom teeth, too. Oh, neat. Hey, That's interesting. All right, so Jack. I guess, I guess my mom doesn't have wisdom teeth, and my Katie only had one wisdom tooth. Did you have it pulled, Katie? I don't remember you having it pulled, but I, I had my canines, actually. That's why I have these teeth now. They grew in instead. But I had Your my fangs? Can, I, yeah, yeah, I had my canines, my baby canines, pulled. And I remember uh, I got the shots, which make you feel like you're just... <laughs> and i went on a play date with a a, a friend um uh, a friend uh oh god what was his, his name brant brant i don't know but then that's my, not but, a real name brant but my friend my, my parents were like oh she just had her teeth pulled and so i remember just being felt like fed like jello and whipped cre- that i was eight uh uh <laughs> jello and whipped cream where we're hanging out and we went to the pool and 
I mean, it was a fun day, even though I just had my canines pulled and my mouth was entirely numb. Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hangover. Uh, oh, okay. I, I've never <laughs> had of any of my teeth pulled. No. Uh, so yeah. I've had uh, other. Shit I'm not happen, a fan but... of the injection of anesthesia into your gums. Yeah, it that doesn't work. Is... Fun fact: the that's... anesthesia mouth doesn't really work. That's um, weird. So, so that's why I take really good care of my teeth because cavities things like that. It just doesn't work. So I feel it all, and it just pain. Yeah. Pain. Oh my God. The the craziest injection I've ever gotten is when I go get uh, um, MRIs for my heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they do. You're, you're pulling this out. Uh, they they will do. Uh, uh, it, it's called um, an MRI with contrast. So so what they do is they shoot you over oh, the iodine. This is the P one. This is the P one, oh. and it literally feels like it starts from the head, and it's like they smash a. a an egg over you, a warm egg, and it just goes down. And when it gets down to your midsection, it really feels like you're peeing yourself. And it's just the weirdest thing. And you do have this conversation in your head. <laughs> it's just like, all right, did I really just pee myself? Um, I mean, I'm going to own it because I have to walk it out of here. But, um, uh, <laughs> And you know what? I might, I might have that well, in a month. Okay, so I, it'll do, be I, I have a slight story that relates to that, but not relates to that, but relates to that. So my grandpa on my dad's side, Papa Al, um, he would always do this egg smash thing on my head. Oh, you talked about this, yeah. Have I told this where he would, he would go, and then he would go like this, like egg smash. And then, like, do this little <laughs> yeah. thing down. And I don't know why or what it was from, but I also, I always giggled. And it was also really, and I would, like, ask him to, like, do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, like, a, a weird thing. But yeah, it was really a not weird medical. Thing. And so if you ever get an MRI with contrast, that's it's it, that's what's going to happen. Wait, and it's really, a... it's, it, it's the medical version of the x mesh. Mm. The medical egg smash yeah, that and, I received as a child. And, from my and so it's crazy. Uh, Katie also had a gum graft. I don't remember the gum graft, Katie. She was a what? A gum graft. What is that? She, she had her gums graft. Is that like a skin graft? They put like gum? I guess so. Wait, I vaguely actually remember this, I think. I mean, yeah, I guess I didn't. I mean, I had that fucked up tooth that didn't have its opposite, so I had to eventually get that removed. But. Overall, I had the standard retainer. Um, I had a retainer. Uh, well, I, had the, I had the mouth, still, the big mouth thing. Still wear mine every night. Where you had the straps I, I that go had around the big your mouth head. Thing. I had the thing that goes around your head, <laughs> and you had to wear it at night. I um, had, I had, to, I had a retainer, mold. and I had the braces and all that good stuff. Um, Jack says his dad. <laughs> Why did this go into dentist dentistry all of a sudden? Uh, Jack says his dentist wiggled a baby tooth for him at age six, and he bit on his hand and refused to release it and took three adults to detach him. <laughs> I can just picture a baby Jack just like, oh my ah! God. So my, yeah. my aunt, who's a hydrantist, like to tell the story. I was getting my teeth cleaned one time. I was, you know, six or seven. I don't know. I fell asleep. And so they just had to hold my mouth open as they went about it. Just uh, so yep. I wish I could fall asleep, on, but uh, people are always talking to you. Yeah, to piggyback on Jack's story, so there's one time where I had cut myself and I was gonna have to get a tetanus shot. Mm-hmm. And my parents, to their credit, they were like, Okay, you're gonna have to get a tetanus shot mm-hmm. the whole time going. They are uh and I really wish my mom was here to tell the story, but anyway, so um uh, you're going to get a tetanus shot. It's going to be real quick, uh, but you have to get this shot because you cut yourself with metal. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. we don't want you to have a locked jaw. Um, and even at the doctor's office, they're telling me this in the waiting room. And I go back and the doctor's like, got to get a tetanus shot. And I was like, what the fuck? What do you mean I got to get a tetanus shot? And your parents are like, we... <laughs> and apparently... <laughs> According to my mom, I got in a karate stance. <laughs> and I was like, nope, nope, not going to do it. 
They, they had to have like three nurses <laughs> restrain me. I love it. I love it. And my mom oh my was, like, was very apologetic to the nurses and all this kind of stuff. I feel. <laughs> but I, it was like, what What do you mean? I'm getting I, a shot. I think I was, Um, and mom, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like I was a fairly good patient in terms of doctor stuff. Because one, if I'm getting a shot or if I'm getting blood drawn, um, I know. Yeah, I don't think I ever freaked out about it, but I I am the person that has to watch it happen. I can't look away. I have to see exactly what's going on. I remember like getting blood drawn and squeezing the tube and I have to watch it happen. Um, yeah. And like I would get like uh, ingrown toenails like cut out all the time and I'd have to watch that. And and I had and I, I don't know if I'm, I, I'm sure I've told the story before at some point. I know you guys have heard it in our personal lives but um when i was three uh beautiful (laughs) segue my mom my mom's already there that was beautiful i know where you're going with it my parents uh so we had uh an exercise bike that in the 80s it was a brio bike that was made stationary um so it had like the chains and everything like a real bike um and so i decided like oh what happens if i stick my finger in the chain and then spin the wheel. Well, you know what happens? It, it gets cut off. It cuts your finger off as a three-year-old, at least. Um, so my 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 uh, here's a comparison. Um, I don't know if this is. Uh, so my finger, you can see, it's kind of crooked. Um, uh, and that's and and so I I cut so I I did the thing, and then I I I go over to my dad and I go. I'm bleeding. <laughs> I'm bleeding. I'm not freaking out. I'm just like, I'm bleeding. And my dad looks down and he starts freaking out. And that makes you freak And then out. my mom comes and she starts freaking out. So then I start freaking yeah. out because yeah. what they have seen that I don't realize as a three-year-old is that the tip of my finger is gone, um, right. which they can't find. So they take me to my doctor, Dr. Cadis. Rest in peace, Wait Dr. Cadis. We gotta go back. They couldn't find your finger? Well, no. I mean, they didn't. I don't know if they looked or, or what, but I mean, it, it wasn't found anyway. We can get some clarification right now. <laughs> it wasn't found. I didn't have a tip of the finger that could be reattached. So I went to my pediatrician. They took me to my pediatrician, Dr. Cadis, um, who's the best pediatrician that's ever lived. Um, and the only primary care physician I've ever had anyway. Um, You're an adult now. Right? I am adult. I don't have a primary care physician. I, 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 I remember my primary care physician is the only one I've ever had. Yeah. Dr. Kirsch, and he rest in peace. Uh, Dr. K. He was like he was like a million years old when I had him. Dr. K. Uh, just well, he ended up getting cancer and recently passed away. But um, and I sent uh, I ordered a, a, a bouquet of flowers that were sent to them and lived in my neighborhood actually that I lived in growing up. Uh, so I, they go and he's like, oh, she's so young, it's gonna grow back. Um, and so I remember there were like bandages and there were like these iodine things that we'd have to do to it. And so it actually did grow back just kind of like crooked and not uh, completely uh, there. Um, and he has an answer. They, they didn't look and there was blood everywhere. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> there you go. But I wasn't freaking out at first and didn't really, yeah. pro- I was probably in shock and didn't really know like what it, you know, I was three years old. Um, so that was, and that is the most, uh, I, probably the most major medical thing that's happened to me i've never broken a bone so far you lead a nice life um i the only other thing that happened to me medically was when i took some i i, I used to get really bad ear infections i had tubes put in my ears when i was little um and and i'd have really bad ear infections growing up i'm very familiar with uh, amoxicillin um and I, I had like my, I was in fifth grade and I woke up in the middle of the night with my ears hurting. So my mom gave me some Tylenol with codeine. Um, and then I went back to bed and woke up a little bit later and I like couldn't breathe. I had like this pressure on my chest and I remember it being really hard to breathe. Um, 
So my my mom was going to take me to like the emergency care or whatever in the middle of the night that it was. But I was like really freaking out. And I don't know at five. I don't remember like how much of the I was dramatizing or whatever. But I really uh, the only thing I remember was like like I could inhale, but like I couldn't fully exhale like I couldn't. I like I couldn't get the air out fully and so she ended up calling 911 and two fire trucks and an ambulance show up by the time they showed up I could breathe again you felt fine <laughs> like I was I was pretty much okay but they put the things in my nose and I took an ambulance ride and we went to the doctor and they think that I had they think that I had an allergic reaction to the codeine and right. the Tylenol, and then I had a minor ear infection yeah. that was beginning. Um, and so to this day, even though it, it's not proven, but scientifically to this day, I refuse to take any codeine. Why, why, why chance it? I'm not going to chance it because it yeah. was such like I remember the feeling of not being able to breathe. And so to this day, I put down codeine as like an allergy on medicines which means i'm shit out of luck for like vicodin uh like i can't get addicted to any of the good shit because (laughs) Um, man you know it's like like when i go to the doctor they ask me are you allergic to anything and i say bees um not that the doctor has his like nest of bees (laughs) just a hive i just want to make sure i just want to make sure like okay you got bees i'm allergic to them don't use them don't use them I, I'm I, not up to date with the latest uh, medical stuff. Maybe it involves bees, but I can't have bees. Can't have, can't have those bees. So, no, I understand. And I can't have that codeine, most can't, likely. Can't have bees or codeine. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's great. But other than my da- back being fucked up, uh, then, yeah, that's... Uh, I, I have never had any medical issues. Neither have I. So... You um, both are just I, riddled with. I have, <laughs> see what you did there. I I am so happy that like I have not had any medical issues at all. Um, I think no, actually, my yeah, doctors are amazed. They actually no. think I'm some kind of elf because I have no no, no medical issues and I think I'm going to live forever. Nice. If only we could all live forever. Well, we're actually going to live forever because we're mm-hmm. vampires now. Yeah, and, uh, but You'll I am be losing, dead forever. I think I'm losing one of my are teeth. You, are you losing one of your teeth? Is or something off? just happened with it. I don't know what happened with it. Uh, I'm getting some of the epoxy. Uh, the epoxy's coming off? My teeth are sticking on actually pretty good. Um, Yeah, no, I hate my body right now. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, my daughter has been written out of the will. She making me go to the doctor all the he doesn't listen to me to go back to the doctor, but uh, well, yeah, the slip disc in my back that was an issue. Um, that's the only other like c- consistent issue I've had is just my because I did gymnastics when I was younger and I did something that caused my disc to it slip. Flipped, landed. I mean, I did a lot of that stuff. I don't know when it exactly occurred, but after I quit gymnastics, I was I don't know doing something and all and my my disc slipped. Um, and I like I, the pain was so intense that I couldn't s- stand up straight. Like I'd have to limp and like, oh, like I was Quasimodo. Um, mm. and, and I went to an orthopedist and they, they found that I had a slip disc, but because I was so young, I didn't need surgery and it would most likely heal on my own. And I had to do physical therapy. Just like the finger. Just like the finger. It healed on its own. Uh, and so it no ended sleep. up, it, it ended up being fine mostly. Uh, but then, uh, when I was in my early twenties, I went bowling and I used a ball that was a little bit heavier than I should have. And in the, over the course of the night and the torquing that I did from, you know, bowling the ball, yeah. um, uh, it, it, it re injured my mm. slip disc and, uh, and I was again in the situation where I couldn't stand up straight. I'm like, I'm going to community college in Glendale, Arizona, and I'm walking around campus, just like limping, hunched over. And like just, Marie Curie? Yes. It's in so much pain, but luckily not from uranium poisoning. Um, 
And I go to an orthopedist and they're like, yeah, you, you have a ruptured disc, which is actually common. Most uh, There's a good chunk of people that actually have a ruptured disc, disc and don't know it. The problem with my ruptured disc um, from when I was younger and in my early 20s was that it, it was pushing on my sciatic nerve oh, and it yeah. irritated mm. my nerve. And so I had the pain that went all the way down my left leg. Um and so I ended up having to take um, Lyrica, which is for fibromyalgia, which reduces nerve inflammation. I took Lyrica and did physical therapy, and that pretty much helped it out there. But my back does still get kind of stiff. Yeah, you um, won't even do like the back uh, yoga. There, yeah, there are some back exercises like when we do yoga that I won't do because I know that it's not like, a, like the upward facing dog, like really arching my back. Um, I know it's going to like trigger it and not going to be good. And actually recently I need to every now and X up where I need to sleep with a body pillow so that I can kind of like sleep. <laughs> Cause normally I sleep kind of on my stomach and that's not <laughs> the best for it. And so I have to, I, it's been irritating. And when are you going to the doctor? I'm not going to go to the doctor. Oh, oh. That's not fair. It's fine. Okay. I just got to sleep with a body pillow for a few you know nights what? and then it's fine. I got to stretch it out. I got to do some fetus poses. I am canceling my gotta November do, appointment, gotta do, my December I gotta appointment. I got to do fetus poses and, my some, April appointment. and some cat and some cat I mean, cat I might cows. have to like, cancel my some April cat appointment. Some cat cows. But, um, no, good. I am going to cancel my November. Oh, yeah. My uh, When we went to Disneyland for my sister's 18th birthday, um, my back was really acting up. And so my mom went to like wherever and was like hey my, my daughter you know she has a back issue and she's gone to the doctor and we really need a, a wheelchair and she played it up enough where normally you have to pay for the wheelchair but they gave it to her for free and so we ended up getting in the front line at disneyland because i had the wheelchair because my back <laughs> it was system. it was pretty nice my back did hurt and could not handle the walking but I mean, I could freely get out of the wheelchair. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. My dad's Facebook po- photo is still with me in the wheelchair from that day. You know what? I didn't uh, see this. You, you know what? I think, uh, uh, I think we need to play some stuff up because Disney raised their prices. They did raise their prices. So I think we need to play some stuff up when we go there and whenever that is. <laughs> Anyway, this uh, hangover what? became uh, spooky to medical issues. Yeah. Our own personal medical issues. I feel like my, my teeth are just like, whoop, they're just shooting out. No, they're fine. Okay. It they just look feels... fine. <sighs> okay. They, yeah, they look fine. Okay. I, I you know, <laughs> for two hours, um, uh, for two hours, uh, I have been sitting here going, um, when I pull these out, mm-hmm. my, my, my teeth are going to come out with it. Oh, you're going to lose your canine. <laughs> uh, Jack says, uh, to mess with you, I can name my body pillow Matt, my personal back doctor. <laughs> Who is Matt? I know, he mistyped. <laughs> like, Who is Matt? I don't know. I'm going to think of how oh. many Matts I've known in my life. There's one Matt. What? I've known one Matt. I've known one Matt. I can only remember one Matt. No. But was his name Matt? Matthew. It might have been Matt. Oh, no. Matthew. I know two Matts. There was you a know Matt, Matthew Broderick? There was a Matt that I worked with at Compuse. Well, it was a Matthew. Not a Broderick. There's a couple of Matthews at a And they don't shorten their name to Matt. Oh. And I have to remember to call that's him like Matthew. It's like if you didn't shorten your name to Mike. Uh, to Mike. Even what? Michael? Yeah, there's only two people calling me Michael. Mom and Dad. Yeah. And that's there's it. There's two people that called me Elizabeth. My mom and my dad. But sometimes they call me Liz. And then I go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got a... Oh, God. If my mom were to call me Mike, I, I would... <laughs> I would be like, oh, wait a minute. That's not right. What? What's going <laughs> Who on? Who are you? What alien has invaded your soul? <laughs> All right. So, um, are, are, are we going to move on? I didn't to... include famous maths, Jack. It was just maths that I've known personally. I can think of two. 
Yeah, Matt Smith though is it, I I can't get used to that in and Game of in the new in Game the of Thrones Dragon whatever it is. I mean he has Dragon the Thrones. he has the face I, for it. He does, but it still is just. I mean I'm I used just, to him as the I can't doctor. Get used to it. Have you watched any of the new Game of Thrones, Brandon? I watched two episodes. I didn't get into it. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I can take it, I can take it and leave it. I can take it and leave fair. it. And I there's mean, so much media out there. I don't need to focus on Game of Thrones media. Yeah, I mean, we've enjoyed it. The time jumps were a little bit jarring because it wasn't I... like they explained it. It was just like you kind of had to figure out yourself it was a time jump. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not a big fan of time jumps. But, I mean... Uh, I love The Witcher, though. I love The Witcher. Speaking oh, of time wow. jumps. The Witchers. There's probably a new season out of that, is there? <clears throat> not yet. No, okay. Um. All right, so... Uh, all right. Oh, God. And if you've seen... Rings of Power, that that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed that. And and you know what? To be honest, uh, Lower Decks. If you haven't watched uh, Lower, Lower Decks, Decks. Star Trek Lower, Lower Decks. Decks, check it out. It's Star awesome. Trek I'm Lower gonna Decks. I'm gonna watch the next episode after oh, this. I'm oh, very excited about. We it. just watched the most recent episode. It's good stuff. Nick Nack though is the best. Nick Nack. Nick Nack oh. is the best. Nick Nack. Knapsack. Knapsack. Nick Nack. Nick that. Nick that fatty whack. Give a dog a bone. Nick that. <laughs> all right. Anyway, all right. This has been fun. Uh, See we'll us ha- in two well, weeks. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So, so Jack has to leave anyway. He's going to conveyor belt sushi with the bears. Oh, that's nice, Jack. Have fun with the bears. Tell the bears that we say hi and we send our love to all the bears. <laughs> Man, sushi is just the bear necessities. There you go. <laughs> says, watch the oh, peripheral. watch the peripheral. All right. Yeah, have fun, Jack. Um, and uh, you, can, you have a great week as well. And uh, two weeks, and we'll see everybody in a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, we'll be we talk talking about, about anti-matter. anti-matter. The matter, but is anti. The punk. The punk of, of matter. What's the matter with antimatter? <laughs> wow. All right. Cheers, everybody. We'll see everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.